to our time we got. 9.04. Okay, we're going to start a press conference here today, and we're going to talk about uh, some conservative agendas. My name is Don Huffines. I'm state senator for Senate District 16, which is the north half of, of Dallas County. You know, it's so important that Texas remains a leader in the United States for the business community, to have low regulations and low taxes. That's not only important for the United States, but it's important for the entire world. Because Texas is about business. When people have a job, when they have self-worth, they, they can take personal responsibility for their family and their lives. Everything works out for the best. We have to remember that business taxes are really taxes on the consumer, the workers. They are, they are a drain on the economy. Right now, businesses pay about 62% of the property taxes that are paid in the state of Texas. Businesses pay more than their fair share to keep this great state running. So we need to help the business community and we need to help the consumers in the state of Texas on their overtax and overregulated burden. And I want to thank the conservative Texas Budget Coalition for their work on their agenda today that they're going to talk about. And now I'm going to turn the microphone over to Talmadge, uh, uh, Talmadge Heflin, and he's going to talk uh, about who's up here today and their ideas of how to make Texas better. We're not perfect, but I can guarantee you we're going to try to be perfect. That's our job. Okay, Talmadge, thank you very thank much you. for coming in here today. Thank you, Senator Huffines. We appreciate you working with us to uh, be able to hold our press conference here today. Um, we're going to talk about the conservative Texas budget agenda. Uh, the, the centerpiece of that is the conservative Texas budget. Uh, we believe that uh, you should look every year uh, or every session to stay within population inflation. Uh, all funds. The legislature was able to do that last session. We believe they should do it again this session. Uh, the growth rate is four and a half percent population inflation for the last two years. We believe if you do it once, you can do it twice, do it three times, it becomes a habit. Uh, we also uh, believe that the business uh, franchise tax should be eliminated. The legislature made some headway last session. We look forward to uh, that tax being eliminated. The spending limit today in statute and in the Constitution deals with personal income growth. We believe it should be population plus inflation. And uh, we also know that we have to stop the runaway property taxes. We believe the property taxes should be eliminated, but at least take a step in, uh, elim in uh, stopping the runaway nature of them. The STAR Fund will be s s talking about that, which is allowing uh, money to be appropriated into a fund that will allow taxes to be lowered on a temporary basis. And then budget transparency. The uh, budget should be written where you and I can understand it without going to the, the Legislative Budget Board staff. It should be based on um, program. Program so that everybody can understand what programs are being funded. And that leads us to zero-based budgeting. If you get it to the program level, then you can in, adopt zero-based budgeting. Those are some of the issues that our members will be talking about, and uh, Dr. Vanskian will be next. Thank you, Talmadge. Appreciate the work of the 14 members of the Conservative Texas Budget Coalition. And what we're in favor of is to do what the evidence shows us. And the evidence shows that by having lower taxes, less regulation, less government spending, the keys of the Texas model, you have more economic growth. And we're here to continue that moving forward. When we look at the conservative Texas budget, uh, what we look at is population growth plus inflation to cap the overall growth in state spending, 
to no more than 4.5 percent. And that's based on the last two fiscal years of the growth rate and population growth plus inflation. And so if you can cap spending, then you can also keep taxes lower. So really what we have in Texas is not a revenue problem, which we often hear about, but we really have a spending problem. When you look at the growth in the overall budget since the 0405 budget, we're up 11.8% above population growth plus inflation. So even if you account for population growth plus inflation and meeting the needs of Texans, we're still growing at a fast rate. And that accounts to about $1,600 that a family of four is paying on average this year alone, more in taxes than they otherwise would. And so that's why we're also in favor of reforming our weak constitutional spending limit to one that's based on you know, covering the, more of the budget. We would like to see and cover the entire budget and the growth rate of the lowest of three metrics, population growth plus inflation, personal, uh, personal income, or gross state product, whichever one is the least based on the last two fiscal years. Um, and the lowest one of those the last two fiscal years has been population growth plus inflation, which is the reason why we've chosen that one to measure by for the conservative Texas budget. And then finally, in order to make sure that we keep spending from growing at a rapid rate, we developed a, or designed a, um, a budget cutting tool called the STAR Fund, the Sales Tax Reduction Fund. Basically what it would be, it would be dollars, state surplus dollars could be put into this special fund, and at the end of the biennium, the comptroller would see how much is in there and cut the sales tax rate over a desired period to make sure that you keep more money in your pocket. And so by doing these things, keeping spending low, we can keep taxes low and, and move forward so that the Texas model continued, can continue to be success for the rest of the nation. Thank you. Morning, y'all. My name is Jerome Greener, and I am the State Director for Americans for Prosperity Texas. On behalf of our 167,000 activists that we have around our great state, I'm honored and excited to work with the House leadership, Senate leadership, and the Governor's Office to provide real tax relief through property tax reform. Every year, all Texans experience the burden of increasing property taxes, whether it's through the cost of the rent going up or through the outright property tax bill. By simply reducing the rollback rate from 8% down to a rate in line with population growth plus inflation, or 4 or 5%, while simultaneously removing the petition gathering process, we can effectively fund local government, provide necessary tax relief, and any time we need to go over those funds, taxpayers can elect just how much more government they are willing to pay for and elect. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Josiah Neely. Hi, I am uh, Josiah Neely. I am the Texas and Southwest Director for the R Street Institute. And uh, I just want to emphasize that what we're talking about here today and these proposals uh, and what the legislature will do during this session will echo not only for the next two years but for decades to come. Uh, the budget decisions that get made in one biennium uh, don't only affect that biennium. Uh, they have implications for future, uh, future years by setting baselines. Um, and I think we've seen the restraint that the legislature showed last session uh, is, also, is already uh, benefiting the state. We're in a stronger position now than we would be if, we had, if the legislature had spent all the money they thought they would have two years ago. Uh, and, and we need to continue doing that in order to strengthen ourselves and protect ourselves for whatever may come uh, in the future. That's also true with uh, a number of the different tax reform proposals uh, that we have here, many of which are going to, you know, if enacted, would have implications far beyond this two-year period. The STAR Fund uh, would provide a, a mechanism long-term for continuous tax relief uh, for Texas. And uh, the business franchise tax, another one I'll, I'll highlight. Legislature last session made good progress towards eliminating it, stated it that they wanted to put it on a path of full elimination, but we need to keep making progress towards that, uh, not only for the next two years, but uh, for, the, for the long term for Texas to come. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Mark. My name is Mark Miller. I'm here representing Our America Initiative. Uh, my position with that organization is a member of their council, uh, advisory council for energy and the environment. Our America Initiative is a national organization dedicated to promoting freedom and prosperity using libertarian values. We are proud to again be a part of the conservative Texas budget coalition. In the last several decades, Texas has enjoyed stellar growth with many people moving here to find new opportunities. 
A major contribution to this Texas size performance is due to our state government keeping its tax and regulatory burden light. However, this success will continue only if sustainable spending limits are maintained. The conservative Texas budget proposals are well researched, set reasonable spending targets. We look forward to the adoption of these proposals. Thank you. Next speaker. No. Thank you very much to our uh, members that uh, were able to come and speak today. Uh, as you can see, we have an aggressive agenda to uh, protect the taxpayers' dollars. And it starts with adopting a budget uh, that doesn't grow beyond population and inflation, the taxpayers' ability to pay. At this time, if there are questions, I'd open it up for any questions that we might have. So what the research shows is that spending is up 11.8% above population growth plus inflation since the 2004-05 budget. And so it doesn't necessarily mean there needs to make, be made cuts right away. It's just that we need to get the growth rate back on track to where it will match population growth plus inflation over time. And under our conservative Texas budget metrics, it still allows for 4.5% growth. So that doesn't necessarily mean make cuts this time, but it just says that we need to make sure that we're spending our dollars on effective programs um, and make sure that the overall budget doesn't increase by faster than that rate. Now, did both the House and Senate budget that both stay within the 4.5 cap that you guys talked about? These introduced versions, um, we've, we've looked at those some, and so of course these are just starting points. Um, and so right now, we're focused on making sure that they don't go above 4.5% as we move forward. But as I know, like, we're just yeah. at the beginning, but right. where, how do they, how do they Right now, there seems to be, there needs to be some work that needs to be done as we move forward. But as of right now, we're just, we're just trying to go through and say, hey, look, our cap is 4.5% uh, based on population plus inflation. So they're both above 4.5? These are the starting points. Um, and so we don't want them to go above 4.5% overall. Um, as we go forward. All right. Any other comments? Also, the, the STAR Fund is the, the legislative proposal. Yes. And who's sponsoring that? So STAR Fund is, is a legislative proposal. Um, it, it's, it's, it's not been proposed yet. So there's not a bill out for it yet, but we're still working on that. So you guys don't have a problem Correct. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, we are uh, serious about uh, having a budget that doesn't go above population inflation, uh, and we'll be working with the House and the Senate to make that happen. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the panelists.